District 300 School Board cr- Candidate Christina Constanti. Did I say that right, Christina? Yeah, you did. Good. I appreciate that. And next to Christina is Connie Kane. And next to Connie is Bob Reining. And uh, again, welcome. Welcome on the show. Connie, I know before a break, uh, and we were talking about this during during the commercial, uh, parents and candidates under attack is nothing new. Tell us about some of the attacks either directed at you or others that you're aware of. Well, some of the attacks bear no resemblance to reality. Uh, when I ran in the general election, I was accused of stopping a ban on assault rifles. I have no power to stop a ban on assault rifles. I had never held office and I never voted on any legislation. So a lot of these lies bear no resemblance to reality. And and that is true. Uh, And it certainly doesn't have any bearing on Governor Pritzker, who continues to level attacks day after day in in press conferences uh his support of candidates who continue to attack conservative grassroots everyday moms and dads i mean for the professional politicians to a certain extent fine you signed up for this but school board candidates library candidates i mean to level these sort of professional vicious attacks is outrageous and it's a certainly a new low uh in america let me ask you, and any of you answer, uh, what's the temperature? I mean, we know that internally, you know, I don't want to get caught inside baseball, but we know we're fired up about these races. Are the voters, are the constituents just as fired up as we are? I see you're nodding your hand or your head, Christina. Yes, I have knocked on probably a thousand doors in the last week, and uh the big question for a lot of the people that I'm talking to are, you know, how do you stand? Like, are you a conservative? And when I tell them the yes, they thank God they invite me in, and you know they want the they want to ask you know specific questions, but they know in general like what we're for, what we're against, you know. And um, it's been very refreshing to talk to them, and they are very thankful that we have three great candidates running. Um, so I really am hopeful that we all three get on, but really just meeting these people, knowing that there are so many people that feel like we do is, is just really a great idea. It's a great thing. It's, it's very encouraging to hear. Connie, would you like to chime in on that? Uh, yes, I have spoken to many voters and people are paying attention to what's going on. I send out email blasts and I know that With the emails I send out as school board candidates, about three times as many emails are being open as when I ran for state rep. So people are paying attention to what is going on. And a lot of the doors I knock on, the people want conservative candidates. They're against the CRT. They're against comprehensive sex ed. And they want conservative people to run for school board. And Bob, I, I'm assuming that you're probably experiencing the same thing when you knock on doors. How many doors have you knocked on? Do you have a number? Probably like 500 so far. Yeah, it's a lot. And, and it's winter time, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. So don't forget, it. the weather is, hasn't yeah. been cooperating all that much. So this is rain, sleet, snow, ice. You're out there knocking on doors. Bob, have you gotten any encouragement from just constituents that you're randomly meeting or knocking on the door and they're, they're urging you to keep fighting the fight. Uh, a lot of them are very encouraging to me, and I, I appreciate that. And a lot of them are also, they don't, especially the older uh, people, they don't really know because they don't have any skin in the game when it comes to the schools, to what is being taught and what is being pushed. And so they appreciate those conversations, you know, talking about that. Their biggest concern though is their taxes is that they're getting hammered with their taxes and every year their taxes are going up and they're it's going to start affecting their home values because our taxes are going up the quality of education is in the toilet right now and and there there's nothing 
being done to fix that. So when I bought my house, that was a big deal. Where you buy your house to make sure you're going to good schools for your children. Well, to know that, you know, less than 30% of our kids in District 300 could read or do math at grade level. I mean, for the amount of money we're paying for our schools, that's, you know, so that I, I explain that to, to the people when I knock on their doors and they're just flabbergasted by it. School board officials, the superintendent, uh, I'm assuming they are, they have been, it's unfriendly territory. I've had a lot of great conversations with our superintendent at District 300 throughout the um, time that she's been with us. And in fact, um, right before we filed for petitions, she and the director of equity, uh, inclusion and uh, diversity, um, the two of them sat together with me. We had a meeting, 40 minute meeting, and we discussed um, the divide that we as a community and the district are having and how can we fix that she asked me she said you know you you have great input you have made an impact at our school board meetings at our school district level um, but we have this and she put her fist together like how can we fix this and I thought that was like I, th I just thought that was a great conversation and that she was very invested in what I felt how to fix that you know but that was before I filed for school board. So two weeks <laughs> later, everything changed because they were going to apologize to me publicly about something um, that was um, done, you know, the week prior. But, uh, you know, as soon as I filed my petition to run for school board, I, we're back to this even times 10, as you heard. Right. So, And they somehow forgot about the, the uh, contents of your meeting, right? right? About how do we bring people together and all of a sudden yeah. you're... Your blacklisted Connie. I saw when Christine was talking, you were nodding and and yep. uh, uh, shaking your head. Similar experiences. Well, my experience with the superintendent is uh, she, it, she seems to be trying to protect the school board. And let's face it, they're a low performance. Uh, only one out of our one out of four of our kids in District 300 is uh, reading and doing math at grade level. And it's a big district, so that's 14,000 kids, you know, that can't read and do math at grade level. That's a big deal. That's a, that's a very big problem. And uh, I want to talk a little bit more about that. And we've got another school board uh, candidate calling in in our next segment, so we're going to take a quick pause here, and then we'll go back to you. But I want to talk about that uh, because it's true, and in Chicago Public Schools, it's remarkable 10,000 children did not return to the classroom after the pandemic. How in the world does a school system lose 10,000 children when we have the best technology on the planet? We could track anything with our iPhones, but yet schools and superintendents and principals, they have no idea where they went. And at the same time, we're seeing numbers, test scores just plummet. And But while test scores plummet, your taxes continue to skyrocket, right? And the amount of money that you're spending as taxpayers per student, you might as well just put them in a private school. Because what's the difference? I mean, you're only probably, I know I've had other guests in, only a couple thousand dollars difference between public school and private school in terms of what you're having to pay per pupil. It's really interesting, but 